Good morning and welcome. My name is Mika Lavekmianti. I'm a professor of political science and the director of the LSA Honors Program. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to this event, which begins three days of celebrating our graduates. Here, we recognize graduating honors students across the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts. During this hour or so, you'll first hear from two of your peers. We'll then recognize a number of award winners. After that, we've invited an outstanding honors alum to share some reflections with you. And then finally, we will recognize each of you individually for your wonderful achievements. And if you missed the slideshow before we begun a moment ago, you will have another opportunity. We will run it again immediately after the conclusion of the formal recognition. Honors is all about academic excellence. College involves lots of thing things, becoming an adult, having meaningful experiences, having all kinds of fun, some of which we don't even want to know about. That's great. But academic endeavors are what anchor it all. To graduate with honors is a remarkable thing. In most cases, that means writing an honors thesis, a work of original scholarship that is completed usually during the senior year. A successful completion of the thesis means that you graduate with honors. In some majors, and by some, I mean mathematics and statistics, you can graduate with honors by taking an incredibly rigorous set of courses instead of writing a thesis. A lot of you are here because you've done one of those things, thesis or math. Welcome and congratulations. There's also a new way of graduating with honors. A student can earn honors in engaged liberal arts by integrating rigorous coursework with an independent leadership or civic engagement project. Some of you are here because of your wonderful HeLa work. Welcome and congratulations. I also want to welcome and recognize our other guests. You are here to celebrate these wonderful graduates, but you, families and friends, have also made it possible for these students to get to this point. Welcome and thank you. I now want to acknowledge and thank my colleagues from the Honors Program. The students know why I should, they too have helped, have helped you get here. They are Lisa Brew, John Cantu, Stephanie Chervin, Henry Dyson, Barb Frecker, Katie Gass, Gail Green, Denise Guillot, Shannon McCauley, Jerry Preston, Kaylee Shelton, and Jacqueline Turkovich. They are here because they are so happy for you and so proud of you. Now, okay, here obviously means Zoom this morning. It's been 415 days since the World Health Organization declared a pandemic. And we all know what a hard experience it has been. Zoom school has been the frame around your last year of college. And we all wish we could do this ceremony in person with handshakes and hugs. Remember those? But we wanted to do something to celebrate you. In developing this ceremony, all the good ideas came from three of you the student planning team that helped us. We'll get to congratulate them in a bit. Right now, I want to thank Juliana Pedushi, Jillian Rubenstein, and Jordan Tayo for your help and for your commitment to your peers. It's important to remember that your college experience is so much more than the challenges of the pandemic. We know you all would have wonderful, exciting, heartbreaking, and inspiring stories of your years at Michigan. But to hear them all would take us into June, and you have postgraduate lives to begin. So we've asked two of your fellow graduates to share them some thoughts. Now, here's a funny coincidence. After we had put this program together, we realized that all of our three speakers, including our alum, are Ann Arbor natives. It obviously wasn't our selection criterion, 
But even in this post-geographic moment on Zoom, it's good to be reminded of the importance of this city and campus in our lives, whether it's just the years of college or more. If your last name begins with a Z, you've probably been among the last to go whenever there is a list of people. So we thought today we'd change the order and invite Soraya Zirikum to address you first. Soraya is graduating with a double major in philosophy, politics, and economics, that's just one major, and honors English. She wrote an honors thesis in English called Learning in the Shadow of 9-11 on how the 2001 terrorist attacks are remembered and taught in schools. Last fall, she taught her own course to honors first years, and she has spent much of her college time on education policy. For the last year, she has also been working for Penn Hill Group, which is one of the leading education policy consulting firms in the country. For her thesis and other work on education, she's the winner of this year's Sydney Fine Teaching Award. After graduation, she'll move to DC to work full-time at Penn Hill Group. Soraya, I invite you to address your fellow honors graduates. Thank you, Mika, for that kind introduction. How do we, as a society, remember and reflect on the past? This question lays the foundation for my honors thesis, which explores how national events, specifically traumatic ones, embed themselves into our collective or shared memory. One of the many opportunities the honors program provides us is to teach a class based on our senior research to a group of incoming honors freshmen. In the early months of 2020, when I began preparing the syllabus for my class on the concept of collective memory, I did so imagining a classroom filled to the brim with dynamic students sitting alongside each other and working together to ponder the abstract idea of how traumatic national events become imprinted upon our collective consciousness. When I entered my class in the fall of 2020, I was instead welcomed by a group of only seven students, masked and six feet apart, but just as dynamic and excited to engage with the material as I had hoped, now with it being much more linked to their reality. It was in our third class that we began to think about the past year and wonder how our memories of this year as college students in the pandemic would contribute to a larger collective memory. Near the end of the conversation, a student said something that I found striking, that we, the senior class of 2021, had the worst timing with the pandemic because we'd completely lost our senior year. Now I'm sure all of us have felt that way about this year for a second or two, but I was also surprised because I'd personally felt bad for the freshmen sitting in front of me. While they were sorry that I wouldn't get a regular senior year, I so sorely wanted them to have the parts of my, perhaps our, quintessential freshman year and the years that followed. My freshman year, a year where I began meeting the people that I will now keep in touch with for the rest of my life. It was a time when running around the halls of South Quad, my first friend group fluctuated between 15 to 20 people, much larger than any recommended gathering this past year. It was also the year that I first entered a packed auditorium without recognizing a single face and had to choose a seat. Over time, we all grew more confident walking into these filled classrooms, recognizing our classmates and knowing that if we didn't, we would soon befriend each other. In the dining halls and libraries, at awkward mass meetings, Saturday tailgates, I now remember the past three years as a time when I was surrounded by so many incredible people. The memory of these gatherings, these relationships, and those that I was able to stay close with this past year have given me hope throughout the pandemic for the future and kept me sane in the present. And it hurt me to know that the freshmen in my class didn't yet share these memories with me, with us. Beyond the people here at UMish, we all share certain events and moments from the past few years, albeit from our own perspectives. We all know the intuitive feeling of avoiding the block M on the diag as you race to your next class alongside the rest of the student body. We know the feeling of joy our sophomore year when class got canceled for what we thought was the first and last time because of the polar vortex. We also know the excitement of the first game day where sunburns and a midday nap were inevitable. We on this call share the twists and turns we've all had over the past few months finishing our theses especially the nervous jitters and sense of disbelief once it was actually turned in. And now we're sharing the feeling of graduation, of having accomplished what we came to do here at UMish, and now getting to look ahead. 
These were all people and experiences and feelings I wished to share with my students. But then I realized that their college years are theirs to share, just like ours are ours. I'd spent a lot of time thinking about this past year as moments lost, that I hadn't taken a breath to consider how this year contributed to my memories in Ann Arbor, a smaller collective memory, but one I've cherished. It's been four years, our four years, collectively shaped here by the trials and tribulations of an honors thesis, but also by the collective ups and downs of a college career, and I truly cannot imagine a better class to have shared them with. So back to my original question, how do we remember and reflect on the past? I spent a year thinking about it and I still don't completely know the answer. What I do know though, is that I will reflect upon my time here at the University of Michigan with gratitude for the tangible things, my honors thesis, an incredible amount of maize and blue clothing and photos of every moment from 2017 onwards, as well as the intangible, my friendships, mentors, and the personal and academic growth I've experienced over the past four years. Most importantly, I'll know that interspersed around the world, there are people who share these memories, hold them dear, and even if we cannot always be together, um, our memories will be. Thank you. Thank you, Soraya. Our second student speaker is Max Hammer. Max has an honors major in molecular, cellular, and developmental biology. Yes, that's all one major and a minor in philosophy. Max is a four-time national champion and a Pan-American champion rock climber. Last fall, he was awarded the Marshall Scholarship, one of the 46 national recipients and 11th in UM history. With the Marshall Scholarship, Max will spend next year at the University of Edinburgh studying philosophy. And after that, one year at University College London, studying pharmacology. After his two years as a Marshall Scholar, Max will begin as an MD PhD student at the University of California, San Francisco. Max recorded his remarks earlier this week, but he's also present here with us all. Let's hear what Max has to say. Hey everyone, the world tuning in virtually, it's so nice to see my fellow Wolverines from the honors program here on Zoom. Growing up in Ann Arbor, I've been bleeding blue since before I could even talk. I went to preschool at the U of M Hospital Daycare Center, met our former Michigan football coach Bo Schembechler when I was six months old, and I've been going to games in the big house every year since. Considering that my past 22 years in Ann Arbor are culminating on this graduation, it's pretty surreal to be speaking to you all right now. And I have to admit that I'm a little nervous. True to form, even on my last day as a Michigan student, the honors program continues to push me out of my comfort zone in exciting new ways. Now, when I look back at these four years, while I learned quite a few things in the classroom like we all have, the communities I found outside of the class were where most of my favorite and most influential memories were made. What embodied this most for me was my time building the Michigan climbing team. I've been a competitive rock climber for over 10 years, and while there is and remains a welcoming community of recreational climbers here in Ann Arbor, when I arrived my freshman year, I was the only one at the university interested in competing in the sport. I spent the year traveling by myself to regional, national, and even international competitions, repping my Michigan gear everywhere I went, but it felt empty doing it alone. I came back sophomore year dedicated to changing that, and with incredible support from my fellow climbers and university leadership, I was able to launch a competitive climbing team that is now recognized as an official club sport, boasts a roster of over 50 students, and has swept competitions against teams from our neighboring eight states, most importantly of which was OSU. While success is cool, it's not the success of the team that I cherish most. My fellow climbers have been my teammates, but more than that, they've been my community, my closest friends, and really my second family here on campus. Longing for that sense of camaraderie my freshman year also made it all the more special once I had it. Saying goodbye to this amazing group of student athletes is one of the hardest parts of graduating for me. The communities that we find ourselves a part of come in all shapes and sizes, and the honors program has been a prominent one for me that has helped make Michigan my home. It's easy to feel lost on such a massive campus 
and though we all have different majors, backgrounds, and interests, this group is bound by our shared passion of engagement. I'm so grateful and I've been able to see many of you again and again, whether living in South Quad, taking honors core classes, sharing your inspiring work in student seminars and the Honor Summer Fellowship, or during the countless social events like running, climbing, or even ice skating with honors, where we had to save my housemate when he got stuck in the center of the rink trying to learn to skate. Before I finish up, I feel that I can't sit on Zoom giving a virtual speech without addressing the fact that we are graduating college amidst a global pandemic. This past year has been difficult for a plethora of reasons, and our inability to have meaningful in-person experiences has been a major one. While I'm grateful that we have all used our creativity and ingenuity to find ways to continue engaging with one another, I think that we can all agree that it still hasn't quite been the same. But as we were all soaking in the joy of spring in Ann Arbor, or wherever you may find yourself zooming in from, I'm reminded of how the cold gray winters make the bright warmth and colors of the spring so much richer. In a similar vein, this past year has reminded me how special all of our communities are, both in remembering past years and looking ahead to the exciting experiences that we all have in front of us. So just as the winter makes us savor the spring, and my lack of a team freshman year made me appreciate my teammates even more, so too will this virtual year allow us to go forth more eager than ever to soak in the richness of our lives and take hold of the opportunities in front of us. We are an incredibly unique class because of how the pandemic has painted our perspectives and strengthened our perseverance. So congratulations to all of us for making it this far and accomplishing so many great things along the way. As I have been saying my entire life, and will continue saying forever, go blue. Thank you, Max. We now recognize a small number of students for special awards. These awards have been made possible by generous alumni and friends of the Honors Program. We'll begin with the Virginia Voss Memorial Award. Virginia Voss graduated from UOM in the mid-1950s with a major in journalism, but died as a young adult. Begun in the 1960s by her sisters, the Virginia Voss Awards were the first awards given to honor seniors. We have been recognizing superb writing by graduating women since then. The Voss Award this year goes to three students, Rebecca Wyeth, English in Creative Prose, Isabella Buzinski, History in Academic Writing, Abigail Richberg, Psychology in Academic Writing. John P. Kennedy, an alum of the Honors Program, has provided two generous gifts to acknowledge and support excellence in writing and scholarship, each in honor of one of his parents. The Dr. John J. Kennedy Graduation Prize acknowledges and supports excellence in poetry, creative writing, or scholarship about literature. Catherine Fennessy, Classical Studies. The Patricia Kennedy Award is given with preference for students working in English literature or women's issues. Emma Reck, Classical Studies. Since 2002, the Honors Program has given awards to outstanding graduating seniors with generous support from the Goldstein family. The prizes are named for distinguished UM alumni and associates in these areas. Faculty nominate students not just for their honors theses, but for overall excellence in their academic careers, leadership, and service activities. Robert Hayden Humanities Award, Bess Rothman Philosophy. Arthur Miller Arts Honors Award, Sean Anderson, Cognitive Science. Marshall Nirenberg Life Sciences Honors Award, Anish Saraswat, Neuroscience. Marshall Salen's Social Science Honors Award, Yuting Chen, Political Science. Sydney Fine Teaching Award, Soraya Zirikan, English. Gerald Ford Public Policy and Service Award, Erin Wagrin Jones, Honors in Engaged Liberal Arts. For the Stephen Smale Mathematics Award, we have two equally impressive yet very different students Fangu Chen, Mathematics. 
Wang Chao Shu, Mathematics. Named in honor of the former LSA Dean, the Terence MacDonald Award for Archival Research is given for the finest thesis which makes substantial use of archives or museums. Shannon Burton, Classical Studies. The Ferrando Prize in Economics goes to Daniel Motok. The Roger B. Vanko Scholarship in Chemistry has two recipients, Lila Alaka and Bennett Hendricks. The Donna Wessel Walker Award is named after our previous associate director and recognizes a student who has dedicated themselves to the goals of the honors program. Estrella Salgado, History. The Stephen Darwell Award, named after a former director, recognizes an outstanding graduating honors resident advisor, Natalie Kadant, Organizational Studies. What happens next? Well, what happens next is an honors alum will share some thoughts about what might happen next for you after your graduation. Ben Aby is VP of Global Product Design, Research and Development at Carhartt, in charge of seasonal product direction and creating a pipeline of ideas and innovations that will fuel the company's future product legacy. Previously, he was Creative Director of Global Product at New Era Cap Company, the official on-field provider of headwear to the MLB and NFL and fashion and lifestyle product for numerous other entities, including Disney, EA Sports, DC, and Marvel Comics. Ben was also the director of Global Inspiration at VF International Nautica and director of Global Consumer Experience at Springs Global. Ben graduated from the University of Michigan with a degree in honors English literature. He also has an associate associate's degree in apparel design from the Parsons School of Design in New York City. Sneakers are one of Ben's many passions. He taught a class on sneaker culture at Buffalo State University and has lectured on the topic several times, including at the Toledo Museum of Art. He's a proud father and husband and calls his kids his most rewarding design project. To keep this all in balance, he has a daily yoga and meditation practice. We'll now hear Ben's thoughts. Hello everyone, my name is Ben Avey and I'm extremely honored to be here talking to you today. Well, actually, I'm talking to you a week and a half ago from a sound studio in Detroit, but let's not get caught up in the details. Before I begin, I would like to thank Director Mika Lavake manti Associate Director Elizabeth Broom, as well as the honors staff and faculty for inviting me to speak with you today. Thanks to Jerry Preston for helping me throughout the process. Thank you also to the Carhartt team who helped facilitate the filming of my talk today. I would also like to thank my supportive wife and family and my parents who have supported me in my many and varied pursuits. Above all, I want to thank all the students here today in advance because you are all going to change the world for the better. What you have accomplished is amazing. Even without being in a pandemic, the chorus work, the discipline, the commitment to academic excellence you have shown is something to be proud of. If you are like me, sometimes you forget to celebrate the wins, always looking for the next task, the next goal, but please allow yourself to have this moment. You have earned it. A little bit about me. I am from Ann Arbor and graduated from University of Michigan in 1995 with a degree in honors literature. I now have the great privilege and responsibility to be the Vice President of Design at Carhartt, which is a 132-year-old Michigan-based manufacturer of the world's best workwear. I can say without question, growing up in Ann Arbor and going to Michigan helped make me who I am. It's helped make all of you graduates who you are and who you will become. Michigan has given you the tools you need to be a world changer. You may not see it yet, but when you look back 10, 20, 30 years from now, you will notice how all of the lessons you learned as undergraduates gave you your foundation for success. Lives like careers don't take a straight line. Sometimes they only make sense in reflection. Be present and enjoy the ride because there will be bumps and twists, 
But more importantly, there will be learning, surprises, and joy along the way. One question I frequently get asked about in my professional career is how does someone go from being a literature major to working in design at Carhartt? To me, it makes total sense, but I understand how my path may need a little explaining. In fact, it is the very topic I was asked to talk to you about today. One of the most important things you can do to have some measure of success is to trust yourself and take a leap of faith. Sometimes you just have to throw caution to the wind and figure it out. One of my favorite authors, Kurt Vonnegut said, we have to continually be jumping off cliffs and developing our wings on the way down. I believe that to be true and my path shows that sometimes taking that first step out the door is all it takes. From an early age, I've been interested in art and design but I never knew it could be a career. I was that strange kid who loved going shopping with his mother, and I would spend hours in local stores like Sam's and Bivouac, taking in everything I could learn about classic denim and modern technical outerwear. Things like Gore-Tex fascinated me, and spending hours in Army Navy surplus stores gave me an early primer in functional design. But when I came to Michigan, I really didn't follow my heart, because I didn't know how to listen to it yet. I did what seemed practical. I started in pre-med and worked terribly hard to get decent grades in my science classes. I struggled, but persevered. Thankfully, I had a fateful interaction with an insightful guidance counselor who noticed that while I did okay in my pre-med classes, I was getting straight A's in my humanities classes. He said, have you ever thought about changing your major? I realized then and there that he was right. It was risky because I had no idea where the decision would lead, but I knew I wanted to try something else. So. I switched my major to English literature and my life changed. My grades improved so much so that I was accepted into the Honors College, which made a giant university feel more intimate. Once I switched my focus, I felt like I was cheating because I love my classes so much and my coursework felt like play. Finding your passion is like that, isn't it? The classes that I had with Professor Ralph Williams, with Professor Eric Rapkin, and so many other esteemed instructors taught me how to think showed me the power of narrative, made me better understand human nature, led me to question our place in the universe, and ultimately made me appreciate the power of a great narrative and the need for empathy to understand the people and the world around me. I graduated with honors, but hadn't discovered my life's work. I thought about going to law school and I took the LSAT, but when applying to school, I couldn't come up with an answer to the first question on the application. Why do you want to go to law school? So I took a year off and decided to learn by doing. I knew I either wanted to go to culinary school or design school and decided to try my hand at both. For my semester abroad in Italy, I knew I loved to learn about culture through food. So I took jobs at the Earl and at Zingerman's, which were both wonderful experiences. And in fact, I can still prep a side of salmon for brunch if needed. I also started a t-shirt company with some friends. And that's when I realized that while I loved food and eating, what I really love was making things and the joy that comes from creating something that didn't exist before. I took another leap of faith and I applied to design school in New York City without any formal art training and somehow managed to get in. I loaded up a rental truck and drove to Manhattan. By the way, my moving truck was stolen my first night in Manhattan from in front of my apartment building. Welcome to New York. Thankfully, my experiences steadily improved after that first night and we lived there for 15 years. In New York, I married my wife, who I met at Michigan, and had two wonderful children. I worked in a number of jobs, mostly in apparel, but also worked in home goods, licensing, and in publishing. While at design school at Parsons, I ran into one of the admissions officers who reviewed my school submission portfolio, and I asked him, how did I possibly get in? His response, your drawing skills weren't great. We knew we could teach you to draw better and to sew. We were more impressed with your concepts and the narrative you created with your collections. Those stories are what got you into design school. Even now, my love of stories and my ability to empathize are what has allowed me to be successful in my career. To be a great designer, you need to be empathetic. You need to understand how to interpret stories, how to get to the meat of what someone is telling you, discern their needs and create something better than what they thought that they needed. Great designers have to be great storytellers. They have to be able to sell people on their vision, take them along for the ride, and ultimately align and collaborate to create things better than what existed before. At Carhartt, a company that makes functional workwear, there still has to be that unifying thread, that narrative that holds our collections together. 
we have created an empathetic design process based in visiting job sites and learning directly from the people who use our wearable equipment, making sure we design products they actually need. We discuss a lot on our team about how stories give products soul. And that is why people have an emotional connection to the product we make. Some of you are lucky to have your ears finely tuned enough to be able to hear your own heart's desires at this present time. Some of you, like I was, are still searching for your right path as you sit here at graduation. Sometimes it takes a little bit more time to be able to hear your soul speak. But I know this, what I learned at Michigan, the power of storytelling, the need for empathy, being a lifelong learner prepared me on my curvy path to where I am now. And as I write this speech and look back, my path all makes sense. Everything I have done has led me here. I am confident that what you have learned will serve you equally well on whatever path you choose. I want to leave you with one final quote, again from Kurt Vonnegut. Of all the words of mice and men, the saddest are what might have been. So start now. Dream big and take that first small step. Take a risk. Put your hands in the dirt and learn by doing. Figure it out along the way. Because in these unprecedented times, safe might sound good, but safe is actually risky. So own your narrative. Live your chapters and write your story. Congratulations, Honors Class of 2021. The future is yours to design. Thank you and go blue. Ben is with us this morning, so I can thank him live for his thoughts and his inspiration. Thank you, Ben. That was wonderful. It is now time to recognize all of you, our wonderful graduates. My colleague, Honors Associate Director Lisa Broom, will read your name as it crosses our virtual stage. Family and friends, feel free to cheer and applaud virtually through our social media. A note that we are following the same convention we have in our in-person graduation. Your names are not in an alphabetical order. Jaden Laura Mann Bryant, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Jason Jiachen Fan, Economics. Valerie Lay, Communication and Media. L. Allison Jimenez, Sociology. Haley Nicole Cotton, History. Wanchao Xu, Mathematics. Lily Carolyn Johnston, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Michael Edward James, Biochemistry. Wenyi Wang, Mathematics. Sahil Anand Jha, Spanish. Haley Aaron Gritz, International Studies. Josiah Shirk, Interdisciplinary Astronomy. Caroline Layla Martin, History. Honor Smith, History. Marisa Danielle Wright, Political Science and Women's and Gender Studies. Sarah Kaywood, Philosophy, Politics and Economics. Morgan Schauen, Honors Resident Advisor. Olivia Grace Matheson, Earth and Environmental Sciences. Alice Hill, Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. Roxalana Sudik, Neuroscience. Tareem Chaudhary, Neuroscience. 
Sydney Kane, Psychology. Benjamin Z. Fisher, English. Trey Smith, Philosophy. Jacqueline Francis Quintus, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Dan Jill Van Dyke, Organizational Studies. Gabriel G. Clear, Biology, Health, and Society. Lizzie Kennard, History. Jason Brenner, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. John Robert Andon, Computer Science. Amber Galvano, Spanish. Caroline Electa Tuzo, Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. Anya Satyawati, History. Ili Fabini Garb, Microbiology. Jordan Ari Schuler, Philosophy, Politics, and Economics. Ping Go, Data Science. William Christopher Cardassus, Biochemistry. Yunji Huang, Psychology. Natalie Kadat, Organizational Studies and Honors Resident Advisor. Xuangzhe Lin, Biochemistry. Claire Oliver DePaula, Communication and Media. Erica Wu, Economics. Anju Jindal Talib, Sociology and American Culture. Daniel Motok, Economics. Elizabeth Marie Einig, Honors Resident Advisor. Sophia Hughes, Political Science. Sohini Pendit, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Yehao Liu, Political Science. Allison Grace Ledetto, Neuroscience. Kimiko Elizabeth Varner, Asian Studies. Sabrina Maria Corsetti, Physics. Max Hammer, Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology. Rada Valyasevi, Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology. Thomas Nelson Vance, Political Science. Abigail Grace Richburg, Psychology. Seth Dylan Finkelstein, Psychology. Daniela Aaron Levinson Morell, Communication and Media. James Chandler, Economics. Winfei Eng, Computer Science. Monica Merston, Environment. Catherine May Bennell, Biology, Health, and Society. Yuan Chun Ye, Mathematics and Economics. Samantha Rose Sirpa, Biology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Quinn Thu Tran, Biology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Summer Edwards, Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology. Allison Cropsey, Neuroscience. Elijah Rodriguez, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Brian R. Rich, Psychology. Suchi Salvi, Cellular and Molecular Biology. Sarah Margaret Payne, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Jillian Rubenstein, Gender and Health. Jacqueline Genevieve Kunish, Biochemistry. Anna Koryakos, Environment. Raquel Eva Wollens, Social Theory and Practice. Rebecca Nitchelm, Biochemistry. Juliana Ramirez Matias, Neuroscience. Michaela Marie Barber, Chemistry. Tichi Zhang, Computer Science. Macy Afsori, Anthropology. 
Benjamin Raphael Charre Iorio, Economics. Deborah Ho, Psychology. Yuan Zhang, Mathematics and Physics. Duncan James Drury, Cognitive Science. Lucy Catherine Locke, Psychology. Susanna Lutrakowska, Philosophy. Justin David Anair, Biomolecular Science. Cheyenne Sierra Killen, Women and Gender Studies. Yuchen Zhang, Astrophysics. Gregory Severin, Political Science. Erin Wagren Jones, Honors in Engaged Liberal Arts. Bennett Lewis Hendricks, Biochemistry. Peggy Marie Randon, Microbiology. Alexis Marie Vanderot, Psychology. Marielle Odette Manzer, Gender and Health. Jacob Albert Katzman, Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology. Kieran Alexis Cromer, Neuroscience. Laura Stahl, German. Kutsav Trivedi, Biomolecular Sciences. Grace Ann Kramer, International Studies. Jiheng He, Physics. S. Rothman, Philosophy. Sydney Lee Smith, Women's and Gender Studies. Madison Mueller, Communication and Media. Chase Gerard Matuzak Glasser, History. Jahanavi Chalaganda, Biology, Health, and Society. Charlotte Louise Abrams, History. Lena Juniper Gasky, Classical Languages and Literature. Alyssa Cutter, Microbiology. Jenny Wu, Honors Resident Advisor. Sarah Jex, Sociology. Michelle Liu, Cognitive Science. Amanda Nicole Peters, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Lisa Chua, Cognitive Science. Nicholas James Daniel, International Studies. Maria Louise Lo Cicero, History. Grace Tremonti, Interdisciplinary Chemical Sciences. Catherine Finnessy, Classical Languages and Literature. Rachel K. Rich, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Pablo Andres Cisneros, Economics. Cameron Blair Abraskin, Biochemistry. Isla Alaka, Biochemistry. Annabelle E. Farkas, Political Science. Juliana Braga Baduski, Communication and Media. Sungmin Cho, Political Science. Joseph Manella, Physics. Yuping Zhang, Mathematics. Maya Yu, Biochemistry. Kimberly Nicole Polka, Political Science. Ellie Grace Maley, Psychology. Ayomide Abukunuluapo Okunade, Honors in Engaged Liberal Arts. Marie Ayudi Patipathi. Lucas C.S. Reist, Biochemistry. Kaylin Bondoni, English. Lemmy Kem, Asian Studies. Sana Lise Katanachi, Environment. Nicole H. Hirsch, Molecular, cel Cellular, and, Dev and Developmental Biology. Anish Saraswat, Neuroscience. Preetha Parmidigantam, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Sydney Ray Wilhoit, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Julia Weiner, 
Biology, Health, and Society. Shivika K. Bison, Data Science. Pa Goror, Chemistry. Sonakshi Raju, Neuroscience. Ian Young, Physics. Kendra Grace Renee Bodwin, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Beverly Fu, Microbiology. Tong Tongju, Economics. Ava Honda, Environment. Sanjana R. Ramesh, English. Yingxiao Chen, Economics. Andon Philip Strauss, Political Science. Yingxiao He, Asian Studies. Quinn Alexandra Riley, Women and Genders Studies. Alexandra Luca, Political Science. Arity Lee, Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience. Lon Lamel Sullivan, Biomolecular Science. Julia Stavreva, Philosophy, Politics, and Economics. Jack Waldson, History. Joel Lev Danilowitz, English. Maya Shamra. Philosophy, Politics, and Economics. Timothy J. Lee, Biomolecular Science. Alexander Gavalik, History. Parna Iyer, Political Science. Catherine Carpenter, Spanish. Molly Francis Bacall, Cognitive Science. Kevin Amazaga, Philosophy. Shannon Louise Burton, Classical Archaeology. Mireya Sturdivant, Political Science. Kaylee Yu, Creative Writing in Literature and Psychology. Matthew Joseph Whalen, Biochemistry. Andrew Zane Gardner, Physics. Noah Roy Marcotte, Political Science. Shun Emoto, Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology. Benjamin Akima Becker, International Studies. Soraya Zrikim, English. Micah Pollins Dempsey, English. Robert C. Snell, Anthropology. Anna Michelle Zonneville, Earth and Environmental Studies. Martina Victoria Villalobos Beza, German. Catherine Eloise Grunke, English. Morgan Young, Chemistry. Nicholas Pruth, Philosophy. Nezreen Ezidin, Political Science. Ants Philip Wheeler, Physics. Nulufar Himati, English. Miranda Sargent Chambers, History. This is always the highlight of the year for me and for all of us in honors, hearing your names, Thinking of the journeys you've had over the last years and being grateful that we've gotten to travel along for a little while. You've done awesome things at Michigan. You'll next go on to do awesome things as honors alums. So congratulations, thank you, and go blue.